Pix means we're going to start teaching you how to stitch images as easy as one, two, three. All right, with PT GUI open, we have some menus over here we can kind of cover here, but the easiest way to do this stuff is the old fashioned way. You just click on load images. That's that first button here. And we've got some images here for Railyard 2. These were taken with a, a Canon 7D camera. So we're going to take those images and open those up. As you can see, they're kind of crop sensor, so they're not quite completely round as a fisheye. Over here, it will auto detect the EXIF data. So we're going to do this in one, two, three steps again. So just clicking on step number two, align images. Ta da! Here we go. And this is a nice little shot of the Santa Fe rail yard. Don't know if any of you guys and girls have ever been there, but it's a nice place. I used to live there. Okay, down here at the bottom, you'll see a little crop form factor, and the top, it should be nice and smooth. This is 100% normal. All right, click the step three tab, create pano. Now you wanna make this exactly 6,000 pixels wide. Very important, because that's the HD definition for a virtual tour. And because the link width and height are done, they'll actually be 6,000 by 3,000. Quality image, let's make that 65. We don't want to over compress it, but I want to make the files about 1.2 meg. When we're finished, we can click the create panorama, but it's going to give it some DSC pano 12345.jpg number. Not exactly very English friendly. So as you can see here, that's exactly what it's called. So if you click the browse button, we can go over here, save it to our desktop, and we can give it a different name. How about Railyard 360? Sounds good to me, Bart. Great. Well, Railyard 360 sounds good to me too. So uh, we're going to call it that. It is a JPEG. Let's hit create panorama one more time. And as you can see, it's going to go through the process of stitching the images again, and it'll put my uh, panorama on the desktop here. Okay, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and do one more. So we're going to go to Project Assistant, File, New Project. It'll ask you if you want to save changes. And just like Nancy Reagan, you just say no. All right, so we're going to go do a new project, blank window. And I've got a chapel shot here. This one was taken with a Canon 5D Mark II. So these images are going to be kind of round when you actually see these things dragged and dropped. See, 3D, drag, drop, drag, drop. Okay, so we've got uh, four images here. A couple of them are a little bit darker, but I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks in Photoshop in part two. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch these things. And as you can see here, this room's dark on the left, but these windows don't look so bad. Bracketing will fix this, but that's more of an advanced technique and I'll teach you that down the road. All right, let's click Create Panorama. And this time, let's make it 6,000 by 3,000. And we'll choose the quality, again, JPEG. Make that 65%. OK. And we're going to go change the name of this, which is not going to be Panorama JPG. We're going to name this Church 360, if I can spell. There we go. Church. And we're going to put that in the Dan Ross Chapel folder and we're going to go hit the create panorama button and that's going to go through the steps one two three and four update all those and put them into one nice big long jpeg pano and as you can see pt gui on my macintosh actually runs pretty smooth and it'll run pretty fast on your pc too all right um on the pro version of pt gui we have batch processing we have some hdr tools and again we'll teach you that here in lessons two, three, and four down the road for PT GUI Pro.